Hey everybody, it's Erin Reed, and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to show you the latest release. This is a new Creativation 2019 release from Activia. They have a ton of different products, and they are launching all of the tools to go with their clay. And at the end of this video will be some video footage of me demoing at their booth with the mask we're going to be making today, and also some of the other tools that I didn't get a chance to get yet, but that will, I will be demoing with at the show. So it's kind of a blend between creating something now and also stuff that was at the show. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this thing out and show you how it works. All right, so this is the basic platform that you are to roll out the clay. And it has slots on either side and it has all these little inserts. So if you're taking a look at the inserts and they do have numbers on them. So for instance, this one says uh, one fourth, which means that your clay is gonna have one fourth of the depth. This one says one sixteenth. This one says matching. So before, whenever I've had to roll out clay, and I've played with clay over the years, I've always had to kind of guess the thickness of it. This eliminates that problem. So now, and here they all are, we have 1 4 3 16 1 8 and 1 16 So you can put in the corresponding little sections here, and you get perfect. Today, I'm going to do the, I think I'm going to do the 1 8 So I'm just going to look in here and see. And there it is. That's the perfect. I think the 1 16th would just be a little too small for my mask. But it would be perfect for other projects. So I'm just going to kind of pop in here and see what I think. Yeah, way too thin. But perfect for other problem for other projects. This one, I think, well, I don't know. Now I'm debating. I'm going to go with a little thinner just because it's a big mask. So there we go. And then you just kind of keep these off to the side. This is a air drying modeling clay. It's actually got some heft to it. This is 500 grams and it's not like super lightweight. It's got some density to it. It feels more like an earthenware clay that you would mold with. There comes in white, there's terracotta, and there is black. So we're going to take out the white. We're going to make a Mardi Gras mask. So at the end of this, we're going to be painting it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some out and start rolling it out. So because this is an air dry clay, I want to make sure that I keep this sealed because as soon as I've cracked open this packaging, it's going to start drying automatically. So I have a, just a Ziploc bag I have to the side of me, I'm going to pop this into. These ones are unopened, so they will be just fine. So what I've done is I've taken a little bit of parchment paper and I've added it onto the tray and then added in the little inserts. And then I'm going to take my clay and kind of form it into the shape a little bit just to give me like a place to go of the general direction of my clay. So I need to go more sideways and I'm going to go up and down. And so I'm going to take it this way. Now I'm going to flip it. And if it kind of sticks a little bit to my pin, I'm not going to be too terrible. The reason for the parchment is it makes it obviously not stick to the back and it comes off super clean. So that's why it's kind of sticking a little bit to the rolling pin because it's wanting to stick to this more than the other. So I have a ton of extra space up the top. So I'm just going to take a little tool I have here and just run this along the top, just roughly, peel this off, and i got to add some more to the sides. So I'm just going to take this and add some more here on the sides. So I'm going to keep rolling it out and to get to this shape that I need for my mask and then draw and cut out the mask and pull off the parts I don't need. the mask shape, I'm going to keep all these little extra bits because we're going to be making some fun shapes that we're going to add into our mask. I also have one of the new texture plates that you can get from, this one's called coils. They come in sets and basically just lay it down and then just come in and just kind of smooth it over. Get that texture in there. Because it's only half the size, I'm going to only use it halfway. Flip it up, pick it up really carefully, make sure it doesn't stick to the clay. There we go. And then come over and do the other side. And then just use that to get all that yummy texture in there. Just run it from side to side and then pick it up. I know I've got a little bit of a separation, but I kind of like that. It looks like it's like right smack in the middle. So I didn't really plan it that way, but it worked out really nicely. 
All right, pop these little guys off, and I'm just going to go clean these in the sink to get off a little bit of that dry clay, but as you can see, it's already drying, and as you can tell, because it's starting to dry on here, it's drying to a lighter color than what I had, than what it started off being, so it pulls off here super easy, but I actually want to leave it on this because we're going to dry this on something that's got a curved surface to it. All right, so there's some really cool cut shapes that you can get. There's a whole bunch of different packs they're going to be releasing soon. They look like teardrops, circles, rectangles, all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm going to start off with just a couple of these little teardrop pieces. Let me just pop them out. So I'm just coming out of my clay surface and I'm going to roll it out. I'm actually going to take a much, much thinner. And I'm going to roll with my hands a long ribbon. So just taking it, rolling it out. I might break this into two and get like long snake-like things because we're going to use these to add some fun curls and coils. And if it gets too long, it's getting kind of, you know, wobbly. Split it in half because we're going to be coiling this up anyway. So I'm just going to make a few of these because I'm going to add some fun coils to my mask. So we've got two strands are about the same thickness, the same length. One I'm going to coil inward going this way. And I can actually do, I think I can do them both the same. And then if I, no, I got to do it the other way. I got to curl this one this way. And if it doesn't curl the way you want it to, try again. And if it gets a little undone like I just did, just re-roll it. I'm kind of thinning it out every time I mess with it. So. so all I'm doing now is I'm coming to my mask and I'm adding my coils as like a decorative piece right here on the front. So all I'm going to do now is just kind of keep on adding little shapes I've cut out, little swirls, or it could even just be kind of like a rope piece. Like I can just come in and add that rope piece that was right there, center it maybe, and decide how I want to add it in. All you have to do is just kind of push it down and it will dry in place. So it's really cool in that respect. It's not quite centered, almost. Gives it a little bit of flexibility. Just doing little shapes like that. So adding some elements to the mask. We will be coming back and painting the whole thing and adding all kinds of fun paint colors. This is just building the base and the background for what I want to do for this particular mask. Change my mind on kind of the shape of the mask. I'm not liking the lobes on the bottom. It's just not working with the vibe I want. So I'm just going to come in here and just kind of basically slice them off. Nothing that says I have to keep that. So just trim it. Use my hands to kind of, it's all moldable. It's a beautiful thing about a mask. And then copy the same thing for the other side. I also want to make these a little more pointed. I just feel like they're just not quite pointed enough.
All right, so here is my mask. I've been fiddling around. I just kind of sped through all of it because I kept changing my mind. And it was just, I had to kind of focus in on what I was doing. <laughs> So at this point, it just needs to dry before we need to paint it. And I decided to switch gears instead of using the large tin. It made it too rounded. Instead, I have figured out, I'm going to take one of the um, blocks of clay here. And just lay the mask over the clay and kind of give it that a little bit of a, a vibe of what the mask would look like. So it's got a little bit of a definition. So it's going to dry like this. So it'll have some kind of a shape to it. It won't be purely flat. And this just pulled, a couple of my little pieces just kind of pulled apart. Uh, it's starting to dry. It definitely, I had some pieces that were small that were getting to the point where they were getting overly dry. So it does not take that long for this whole piece to dry before it gets to the point where it's not going to be malleable for you anymore. So just tweaking a couple of the pieces. I definitely could have done it just on here. Um, if you are going to let this dry on something, like I have it resting on the parchment paper, it was really easy to pick up and then just transfer over to my surface to let it be round. So it really worked well with the, the mat having the parchment and I can just transfer it. So it, it was nice and handy. So at this point, lots of drying time and we'll come back and then we'll get to paint it. All right, so this is dried now. I love it. Oops, I got a little bit of paint fleck on there. It's okay, we're gonna cover it up. So here it is dry. It's definitely not gonna be something that I can just like toss around. Um, I did do a little paint test on the back and my color shift paint that I got from Plaid at last year's Creativation is actually what I'm gonna be using. This is a very Mardi Gras vibe. So today I'm gonna be using my black gold brushes by Dynasty. And I'm gonna do the basis, actually I'm trying to decide, I think I'm gonna do the base of my mask because it's my favorite color teal blues greens anything like that so what I'm basically gonna do is I'm gonna come in and for the base of the entire mask I'm going to brush on the teal come in I'm not trying to be too super careful about getting like if I get onto some of the other pieces that's fine but basically getting in and painting the entire surface I might have to do two coats. I'm just gonna have to see how much I like it. I'm not gonna put a thick, thick coat and it might be good enough. So I'm just gonna kind of go around and paint it and get a nice, amazing coverage on the whole thing. Okay, so I only did one coat and I'm kind of liking where it's at. I think that's actually a really good amount of texture on there. So now I'm gonna come in with the yellow and I'm not gonna be super, super worried about the yellow having great coverage because I'm then gonna come in after and add the glittery. So I just wanted to kind of have a little bit of a yellow undertone. The other thing I did is I made sure that the entire surface of the mask was with the green. So I didn't have areas where it was a little bit less covered than others. There was just no way kind of going into all the cracks. I really want to make sure that every little under all the little ropey bits I put, they were, it, there was like full coverage was basically. So I'm coming in now and adding basically some accent colors. There is two glitters. I have a clear glitter and I have that gold glitter. The gold glitter I'm going to put on top of the yellow. The clear glitter I'm going to put on top of the purpley areas. I might leave some purpley areas purple. I'm not going to do a ton of the yellow and it's okay if it's thick because I'm going to be putting the glitter on top and the glitter is like super, super thick, but I wanted to have that appearance of yellow. And both these paints were paints that came from Creativation last year. And I just thought they looked so cool. So I'm loving the fact that this is on parchment paper because I don't have to worry about the back getting gross and then I can twist it. That's the other thing is I can move it around so I can get to the little elements. I'm going to come in, I'm going to paint all these little balls, yellow, so there's some fine detailing. I do have different brushes and I might be switching because I have like a medium sized brush right now. And I think for this fine work, I'm gonna switch to a little bit of a smaller tipped brush because I'm kind of coming into these smaller spaces now. It's been a while since I've done some of this fine 
painting, but I miss it. I love it. I really do. Coming in and just kind of creating more art than just crafty stuff. But it's cool. I love just getting, you know what, just getting in there and being creative in any way, shape, or form is always fun. All right, so those are those ones. So again, I'm going to continue just adding my paints. I'm going to do the swirls in purple. And you're going to see a little bit of a sped up process of what I'm doing. But you don't need to hear me being boring and watching and painting little tiny nubs different colors. So speed up time. So I've done most, I think all of the base painting of all the colors, adding in the purple and the yellow, turning it around, getting all the angles, getting underneath, coming back, kind of flipping between the colors. I went to an even smaller brush and if I had a little mistake, I cleaned it, got it wet, and then just kind of went in right along the edge there because that base is dry just to clean up if I like nicked a corner, like right in here, I just kind of nicked a corner and it's just kind of cleaning it up a tiny, tiny bit and getting off just to make it look as clean as possible. So at this point, this needs to dry. I did turn the light on so you guys can really see what that color shift paint is like. It's so pretty. It really does have that metallic shine to it. I mean, just look. I mean, I don't even have to move it and you guys see it. So drying time on this before I go in and I add in the glitterific paint. Okay, so this is pretty much dried almost, I mean, it's not 100%, 100%, but enough that I can add in the next layer. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna pull this out of the container. This stuff is so thick and yummy and I really need to make sure I clean my brush off really well. I'm just gonna add a little dollop in the center of the spaces. I'm gonna be adding the gold glitter which this is pretty much going to be all the spots that have the yellow. So it really gets everywhere. It's kind of like a glittery glue. It's, it's, it's really cool. So I, I definitely have to clean the brush off when I am done. So there it is. I think I'm done. I just went in and just did the gold glitter. I didn't do the clear just because I kind of liked the way it was going. Um, if I added the clear, it really would color cover up some of the pieces that are on here that I don't want to have covered up. So I think there's a point where you kind of go, if I add any more, it's going to be too much. So we're finished. Next, you guys are gonna see some video footage while I was demoing in the booth. So hey everybody, I am here in the Activa booth. Here it is behind me. And they have an amazing assortment of clays and wonderful things that you can model with and just create with. And so as you just saw, I was making my mask and today I am demoing here at the booth. So I'm gonna spin my camera around and you guys can see the fun stuff I've been playing with. All right, so here is my mask, the one that I made. Uh, you just saw me making, actually. So here it is, live and in person. Made it to the show. All good. Everything's fine. And then I've just been playing here with the clay and doing some other fun stuff. So this is something that I was just kind of demoing and kind of fooling around with and making some more fun stuff with the clay. This one is still the same color, but I've also been messing around a little bit with the black. So here is the black clay and just another little version of that. There is a few different colors. Here are some of the other fun things. So here, just to show you, here is the schedule of everybody and boop, there I am right there. Gotta love it. So all the other fun things that, you know, the other people that have been demoing. So Anita's been here, Rita's been here, and I got to come today and look at some of the fun stuff. I believe Anita made this one, which is so cool. Absolutely love it. So they are having a big sand art competition. So much fun stuff. Just gotta use the Activa sand. So just gonna show you guys some of the fun stuff that Activa has. Just a quickie little booth tour here. 
All right, so this is the fast mache, and just take a look at this gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Look at this fun stuff. And then down here, take a look. This is the cellular clay. So it's all different clay products, which I think is so fun. This is the rigid wrap. This stuff is so cool. It actually has like a rigid, and you can then paint it, and it's kind of wet. It's just really phenomenal. And look, here's some more options. Look at that. So cool. Just take a look at that bear. Is this with the cellular clay, the big bear? Yes. That is so cool. I love that cellular clay with the big bear. So there's a whole range of products. One of the new things that they are coming out with are all of the clay tools. So there's shapes. There's various tools that you can do. I mean, it's just so cool. I love that. Another fun one is this flower drying art. So we saw this demoed previously at Pinners, and I will link that video up in the corner. But you can take flowers into this, you heat it up, and then look, it is so cool. And then you can get this. So here is the decor sands. This is all the fun colors of the sand that you can do some fun art. Obviously you can do the layered art like this. You can do the sand layers. But again, there is that massive contest that you can do. So if you have the Activa sand, you can create some art and submit for some really cool prizes. Woohoo! All right, another fun one here is we have the model in mold. That is fun. Make sand sculptures. There is art plaster. Look at this stuff. I mean, just look, there's so many fun things that you can do. There's Insta Mold down here. There is Quick Casting Kit. So, all the fun things that you could do to make some amazing projects. Just look at that stuff. Just look, it's so cool. I don't know, it just, it's so much fun to play with all of it. And then some of the other clays. So, what I have been playing with today is the Plus Clay which you see over there. There's also the Premier Clay, lightweight stone clay, and then there's the Hardy Clay, which is a super, super lightweight. I mean, you pick it up and you feel like it's just like air. It's so awesome. So thanks so much for stopping by and checking out how I made my mask and also all the fun products from Activa. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button, and we'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.